Um, Kesh, it's such a pleasure to be here with you this evening, and thank you for the invitation to talk with you. But you're going to meet an amazing young person very quickly, the winner of a new award, who is going to be part of all of our futures. We've spent some time tonight talking about how people, in particular scientists, are going to change the world. Yeah, we're going to, but we're not going to do it alone. We're going to have a very important partner that we haven't mentioned much so far. A partner that we're going to have to learn to work with in a new way. Because our partner will be machines. And we don't want to hamstring them they are going to increase our capabilities exponentially. But we also can't let them off on their own. They need guidance and rules and structure and logic and ethics. And we haven't talked very much about that. But I think it's going to be an incredibly important topic in the future. So a couple of times, scientists and policymakers uh, met in this beautiful uh, location at a Silomar in California. And they set out some guidelines. First, for how we keep an eye on and regulate recombinant DNA research. And then, another time, how we work um, with artificial intelligence for the benefit of everyone. But what we haven't really discussed is how we make a partnership in the future when the very machines that we've developed, the science that we've understood to date, leaps ahead so much faster than we can with our biological evolution. You don't want to hold it back, but you don't want to let it loose either. So how do we form these new kinds of partnerships? Well, it's the youth of today and tomorrow that are going to lead the way, and very shortly you're going to meet one of these young people who is going to set uh, our destiny in partnership with machines. It's really hard to know how that's going to go. We, we don't yet have a handle on how to make that partnership work to everyone's advantage. But I'll tell you, from the few words I've been able to spend talking with our award recipient tonight that these young people are going to figure out how to do it. And I think they're going to do a very good job. But they're going to need a lot of help. We're going to break a lot of rules. We've not done this before. Done a lot of things, but not working with a partner that learns and evolves and grows and gets smarter so much more rapidly than you and I can. So it's an exciting future, but it's one that we have to keep a very strong controlling hand on. And it's um, a wonderful opportunity for me to get to know some of the young people who are going to make this happen. And you'll hear from one very, very quickly who has a lot more interesting things to say than I do. And I hope that you can take to heart the real necessity to think about doing our business in a new, empowered, and somewhat scary way. So, um, uh, 
we're going to, we're all going to have to learn to do things differently. We're all going to have to get over this internal conceit that we have of humans being the pinnacle of evolution. We're not the pinnacle of anything. We're not something that was intended to be at the top. We are part of the process of becoming better. So, um, I think there's not much more for me to say, except that we're going to have a video and then I'm going to announce and introduce you to the winner of the new Junior Hawking Award. Hello, Starmus Washington folks. It's Brian May here. Sorry I can't be with you at the Kennedy Center, but I wanted to join you on video to announce the instigation of the Hawking Medal Junior. We believe this is going to make a difference in the future, encourage young minds, young artists, young scientists, young communicators. We hope that the next generation will be inspired to bring art and science even closer together and make this world a better place. God bless. See you soon. Eric is with me, and so it is my enormous pleasure to introduce you to the winner of the Hawking Junior Award, a wonderful young woman named uh, Jitaneli Rao. So if she will please come out, and Garrick has her medal, and I get a hug, I hope. Yeah, Jitaneli. Come. Well, I have to tell you, we have a serious problem. I don't know who is going to compete with her. <laughs> so, congratulations. Congratulations. And if you want to say a couple of words, please. Take that mic over here. Oh, you can have this one if you want. I can do that. Yeah. Whatever's yeah. easiest. I can't move my button. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you so much. I mean, it's, it's such an absolute honor. And hi, everyone. I can't see anyone, but hi. Um, and uh, it truly does mean a lot to me. And I obviously want to thank Garrick and Jill for all their contributions and the rest of the Starmus Advisory Board for making this event and this award possible. It's a privilege and it's an inspiration to share the space with individuals who believe in the power of young people to shape the future. And I hope that I can one day make a fraction of the impact that all of you guys have. And I'll start by saying that what started out as a humble journey to learn about science and technology turned into this responsibility to inspire others to be a part of it. And through the workshops that I run to teach my five-step innovation process, I've had the chance to reach over 110,000 students across 49 countries. So, thank you. <laughs> and that goes from curious minds in refugee camps to educators looking to spark change in their classrooms as well. And my goal has been to kind of start an innovation movement, and I've been fortunate to see incredible ideas grow in almost every corner of the world. Now, the biggest question I get is you're 19, right? You're a sophomore in college. Why and where do you find the time to build something like this? And the simple answer is I believe in the power of now. I believe we're living in this very special time, which we've heard again and again today, where newer technologies and tools are reshaping almost every aspect of life. And that brings with it a responsibility to use them wisely. 
And we're living in a society where opportunities for innovation are absolutely everywhere. And when these tools come together, they allow us to create solutions we couldn't even imagine just a generation ago. But as exciting as that is, I'm actually here to talk about something even more simple. And that's the idea that we have to walk before we run. Because while some of us are exploring AI, biotechnology, and going to space, there are students in developing countries who don't even know what STEM is, let alone how to use it to solve problems in their communities. And as I've learned more about it, I've made it my mission to make innovation accessible for everyone. And I've been able to raise over $100,000 to build maker spaces, organize rural science fairs, and support refugee students, bringing them one step closer to not only discovering science, but becoming citizens who can shape the future of their countries. Thank you. <laughs> and I stand with the idea that I firmly believe that those of us who have more need to give more. Innovation doesn't always start with a breakthrough. It starts with empathy, with noticing a problem and asking what if. And if we're going to build real solutions, we need to make sure every young person believes that they have the power to be a part of that change. Now, my generation is growing up alongside some of the biggest challenges we've ever seen. But we're also growing up without the same limits on how we think. I'm often asked what the best part of and what the best thing about my generation is, and I always say it's our ability to imagine without being boxed in by what's practical, almost like our hot headedness. And if we're going to inherit these problems, then we need to be trusted with shaping the solutions for tomorrow. And what that means is bringing in new voices, diverse perspectives, and it means reaching everyone. It means helping young people like me believe that no matter where they come from or what they look like, their ideas matter. And right now, we have the chance to try things without having everything figured out, right? To explore bold ideas, to ask different questions, to fail, to mess up, and do it all over again until it works. Because as a powerful young person, I truly believe that the risk is almost always worth it. And I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for everyone who supported me along my path, especially my professors, parents, and mentors, who took a chance on an 11-year-old with a dream. And I know that not every young person around the world has that, but I promise to keep working until more of them do. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Almost done, I swear. <clears throat> I wrap this up um, just a little bit to say that receiving the very first Junior Stephen Hawking Medal is not just a personal honor and that to a massive one, but as I said earlier, it's a continued responsibility. It's the symbol of what young people are capable of when we're given the space and the recognition to be the best versions of ourselves. Because if there's one thing that I've learned, it's that brilliance doesn't come from privilege, it comes from potential. And potential exists absolutely everywhere. Now, it's only fitting to quote the person who made all of this possible. Stephen Hawking once said, remember to look up at the stars and not down at your feet. Probably a quote you guys have heard thousands and thousands of times. I've taken with me the lesson to dream big and then think back to reality, something that I've told myself and all my teachers since I was eight years old. There's so much more of a world out there than we could ever even begin to imagine. Now, I really do hope I can live up to the spirit of this award and what it represents because this medal may have my name on it, but it carries the dreams of every young person who's ever felt unheard. It belongs to the kids sitting in classrooms with no electricity, using broken pencils to write down their big ideas. It belongs to the refugee student who told me she wanted to be a software engineer, but didn't think she was ever going to be able to. And it belongs to the student who's never seen anyone who looks like them in a lab coat, but imagines themselves the heir anyways. And it belongs to every young person who dares to dream in a world that doesn't always give them the permission to. This moment is for all of them. And if receiving this medal means absolutely anything, it's that age is never a limit, background is never a barrier, and dreaming big is absolutely never something to apologize for. And I hope I'm proof of that, and I sincerely thank you all for hearing what I have to say. So for every young person out there, to everyone out there, keep dreaming, keep building, and keep looking up at the stars. Thank you so much.